Okay, I might have done one before on a Glenn 326G digital VFO. But we got a customer looking for one and we finally found a couple and dug them out and been playing with them for a while and we learned a few things about them. So uh, we're going to run through, you know, my thoughts and stuff on the uh, Glenn model 326g digital vfo first of all a glenn vfo is basically made up of four parts and you can basically test them separately if you kind of know what you're doing um, first of all this board here has two of those four major components with the uh, glenn vfo and this is the actually the power supply board and the actual VFO board itself so if you wanted to use a Glenn or make it into a VFO without a readout and without programmability and all that all you would need is this board here and that basically is a band switch for the VFO and that um, this would be the band switch and then this one further right basically a tuner to um, tune in the band switch to the right frequency but anyway I'm gonna start at the beginning on this side of the um, this board here over here is the power supply you got these diodes here and then you got the uh, big capacitor to um, smooth out that um, pulsed um, positive AC to DC and you got um, voltage regulated components throughout it to regulate the voltage um, it's basically the power supply puts out two voltages positive 5 and this is the back of this um, 5 volt regulator here and that big transistor there is a 5 volt regulator it takes about nine and a half volts approximately in and no matter what you put in it you get positive 5 out of it it was a common regulator from back in the day and also this um, device runs on positive 15 volts also it's running around and I believe that's the Zener diode if you can see that black one I got centered there with the band at the top that's the Zener diode for the 15 volt DC that also runs um, throughout this unit and that blue cap to the right of that is the filter um, for that so you got positive 5 running around positive 15 volts running around uh, provided by that board and that 5 volt regulator and that's half of what this board do the other half is the actual VFO itself of the variable frequency oscillator and um, it's not crystal controlled so it does drift a little bit and basically it's a cap coil type oscillator it uses a cap and a coil and timing circuits to you know uh, make the VFO frequency then it's amplified and this over here is um, the main coil to it and it's tapped like at six points kinda like a band switch on an amplifier and each tap and if you turn the switch in the back that kind of band switch there or frequency switch it jumps about four megahertz like I think this VFO starts at five and you know position one and position two would be about nine megahertz position three would be 13 megahertz and so on and I think it would go up to 30 megahertz with this and then since it's four megahertz jumps um, I said that backwards this is actually the switch for the coil and then this um, coil has a slug in the middle that you can tune it so you tune it in with this slug so let's say you wanted 10 megahertz but you only can get like 9 and 13 by using the switch so you would go to 9 and then tune it to 10 by using the um, tuner there so basically 
that sets the frequency the basic frequency of the VFO and then you got a couple amplifiers that's an amplifier that's an amplifier and this chip here old school chip got four built-in amplifiers in it also so it just build a, builds the signal up and that's basically it for your VFO you know um, part of it power supply a um, couple regulators and then that cap coil combination and then a few amplifiers and then the output of the VFO now the output goes to two places one is directly out to the output jack you know back here directly to it so if you you know we set this VFO at 10 megahertz that 10 megahertz is going to be seen right here at the um, VFO output back output jack however there's another part of the output a smaller part that's kind of teed off through a small capacitor and it's not full output and it goes to the counter so the counter can read it and also um, part three would be the uh, counter for just a um, frequency counter and part four is this counter is kind of special because you can add numbers or information to the counter so let's say again this um, VFO was set for 10 megahertz but the radio itself you know uh, uh, it's set for 27 megahertz you got a you know another 17 megahertz crystal internally in the radio you're hooking it to but you know you need the VFO doing 10 which this could be set for but you want the counter to read you know 27 megahertz on this VFO not 10 megahertz so you could use these dip switches across here these five banks of um, um, dip switches to add numbers to the actual um, counter not the counter the VFO output to change it from the 10 megahertz it's actually putting out but it'll read 27 megahertz you know for the radio um, at the display here so we're going to turn it on and as you can see this one is reading 27 megahertz output however the VFO on this is only putting out uh, 16 megahertz and also if I hit this um, standby switch this is showing the additional numbers that I'm adding to the VFO output and uh, one of the tricks that I have found in this is that these banks are set in binary which I know binary I know how to count binary and all that but one of the tricks is it goes from left to right with its binary and up top is on and down at the bottom and it's off so switch four it's all upside down here but switch four on the left would be on switch three and two would be off and switch one would be on but the trick is or the catch is even though it's binary it goes switch four is the number one binary digit switch 2 is the 2 binary digit switch 3 is the 4 binary digit and switch 1 is the 8 binary digit it doesn't go in order so that's kind of a got you if you don't know that when you're programming the digits you know 4 is 1 2 is 2 3 is 4 and 1 is 8 so on this one, 4, which is 1, is on. So that's a 1. And number 1, which is 8, is on. So 1 and 8 is 9, right? So in standby, it's telling you what numbers are added to the counter or the output when, you know, when um, it's the output is on. So I'm adding a 9. And that's actually 90 megahertz. Adding a 9 to that signal there just for the counter it doesn't actually affect the output 
this one says four and remember I said that's the one number four and then um, the two would be um, number two and then the three I said was four and as you can see there the three is on the only one on which is the fourth digit and there you see the four and I'm gonna do one more on this one the only one that is on is the two remember four is one two is two and the two is the only one that's on and if you come over here you see the two is on so what this counter is actually doing is adding 94.265 megahertz to the VFO output and again the VFO on this this one is actually set to 16 the v, this VFO was really and actually set to 16 megahertz output and if I hooked it to a counter actually I got it hooked to my counter up there right now it is hooked to that and it's putting out 16 megahertz but you're like how do I get you know from 16 and 94 and you know what the hell is happening and when we turn that you know on where it's um, actually using the counter and that in additional information it says 27 megahertz how can that be well what's happening when what another gotcha that I just learned about these things is that x2 multiplier there that x2 multiplier does not affect the actual counter not the counter I'm sorry the VFO output at all whether I have this in the um, one position or the two position x1 times 1 times 2 over here the counter is still going to be 16 megahertz so it's on 2 now and I already showed you it's putting out 16 megahertz I'm going to click it over here to 1 and as you can see over there if I can zoom in it hasn't changed and I'm going to hit the switch a few times and you can see it doesn't change that at all it's putting out actually 16 megahertz out of this VFO but over here on the display it's actually reading that 10 megahertz 27 megahertz what is happening is again the additional information that's going to the counter it's adding 94 megahertz and then the X1 is adding 16 megahertz and 94 megahertz plus 16 mega is 110 megahertz but there's no extra digit over here for the 110 um, so actually that's why we're getting 10 megahertz and the X2 is doubling that 16 megahertz only to the counter not the actual output so it's doubling the 16 to 32 megahertz 32 and some change and 16 and some change plus the 32 doubled and some change gives you actually 127 megahertz but since it doesn't have a one over here it's just 27 megahertz and again that only affects the readout not the actual output of this um, VFO so anyway this one is set for you know 16 megahertz in that times two position and it's set for a Johnson 250 or Johnson 123 radio but the catch is that radio uses a uh, 32 megahertz in that first position and this counter puts out 16 megahertz so I believe the radio itself doubles the frequency the radio has a um, frequency doubler in it I know some trams like the tram Titan 1 or 2 had a, um, a tripler in it so it used a uh, 9 megahertz crystal and it tripled it up to the 27 megahertz and if that um, crystal was off a little bit 
by the time it got tripled, it would be all three times, you know, what the actual off frequency of the crystal were. So it was real important for the Tram Titan 1s and 2 uh, for the crystals to be accurate. And they weren't, you know, them old big old crystals. crystals. But anyway, this VFO works. Um, again, it puts out 16 megahertz the way we have it set in that X2 position. Um, we have it set up for the uh, Johnson... 250 or 123 radio and what it's doing is putting out 16 megahertz actual and it's adding um, 94 megahertz to the counter or to the readout only so you could get that um, 27 megahertz out so again basically a Lin 326G is a, a power supply and an analog VFO, not digital, not PLL, you know, not super accurate for the output. And then all of this board here is the counter. And then the switches and all those chips to add all those numbers to the VFO to get it to read out accurately, you know, for useful information. Because what would 16 megahertz tell you, you know, as far as what channel you were on or or you know what would uh, 10 megahertz or any of that tell you so you program it you know to the radio and the Glenn manuals tell you um, you know mostly for the old radios um, how to program it and it's in binary but again pin um, number four is one two is two three is four and one is eight kind of weird the way they do that and if you don't know that you'll never get this thing programmed but anyway that's my thoughts on this uh, Glenn VFO oh well one more thing you got the course that you can go up and the fine tune on it and then it's high it take you about uh, 40 more channels actually 90 channels because it's going through